Okay, hi guys. I think I have a lot to talk today. <coughs> and it is about it's a little bit touchy topic and it's Alice Conductor UI. Ooh. So, as I said, uh, current situation, then why we should care about the Conductor UI, uh, about the user experience, what we already did or do, what we can do, some suggestions, and in the end, a short summary. <laughs> So, you forget what current situation. <laughs> uh, regarding the structure, the structure right now, the navigation is not very clear for the user. It's unclear. Uh, it is not uh, clear what is related to what. You know, there are some bounds that, uh, for example, catalog is under pool, and it's not very clear. There, uh, there is bound that image has to be within the environment, and it's not very clear. Then user can get lost in the application very easily. And basic concepts are hidden in the application. For example, we have four tier layer navigation. When we want to reach uh, deployment management, we have to go through uh, four levels, for example. So I had some uh, small notes, find a list of images, deployables, and deployments. Each and every is on different place, each and every is on different number of clicks and it should be consistent. So this is about the structure. Workflows. Workflows are hard to follow right now. Uh, user don't know, doesn't know what step uh, he should uh, take to, to continue his task, to finish it, to fulfill it. Uh, even if user has no privilege or not know not privilege, but uh, can't finish the task, he even can start the task, the process. For example, in cloud environment, if there is no assigned cloud provider, he still can start creating image, and he will fail. <coughs> Why we support this? Often, we have more different ways how to do one particular process. For example, creating new deployment or new app form. So this is it, and each and every step looks differently. We try to fix this uh, with one little bug, but still it's not very clear and it's not very well done. And another one is that we are jumping from one place to another. Uh, this means that we are jumping from admin section to monitoring section, and actually in monitoring section we are managing stuff, so this should be, uh, this should be fixed as well. As well. And another thing is unified views. Each function is on different place. For example, creating new catalog, you can get to this process from catalog list, and you can get in this also from catalog detail. So you go to detail of some catalog and you can create a new catalog list. Uh, the views are, there are not unified elements. For example, there are different headings. Some heading has icon, some heading doesn't. There are different tags. Something has uh, the, uh, the suffix with pool, for example, name pool, or sometimes it doesn't have it. Buttons. Sometimes there appear a button, there doesn't appear a button. For example, before fixing the forms, there are missing cancel buttons somewhere, somewhere they were. And uh, the concept of the views is not unified. If you compare cloud providers, users, or deployment, uh, everything looks differently. I will show you the example of four <coughs> screens. This is provider detail. We have edit, provi editing provider detail at the very beginning, delete at the bottom, and at the top we can switch providers, we, we can disable him, we can return. Then on the same level there are pools which looks very differently. Or this is pool detail. This is detail of the, of the pool. This is detail of the provider. This is detail of the pool. Furthermore, there is the breadcrumb navigation. I know that I'm in monitor section, but it's not unified at uh, at the application. And buttons on the right, uh, they are also not unified. Here is detail of user. Another completely different concept of view. <coughs> And here is the uh, detail of uh, deployment, another different view. So from these four views, 
even if I'm using one application, I don't have the feeling that I'm using one application. I feel like I'm using four different blocks. So this is the reason. Uh, this is this is what I have said here. It's it's uh, summarizing that we don't have clear structure, unified views, and workflows. Why we should care about this? Why should we care? User tolerance. User comes with some total, total, neutral tolerance. It can be affected by his mood, he can have problems at the day, or he can have, he, he can have a good day, depends, but it varies. But let's say approximately he has neutral level of tolerance. By decreasing the tolerance and reaching the negative level, we upset the user to the way that he will never try to uh, use the application again. What we should do, we should, by use him, by using the application, increase the level to reach the positive, or the best, to make it uh, overflow, so he will be willing to ex uh, share, his, his, share his experience. He will be able, he will want to contribute, he will want to talk, to, to tell his experience to other people, and to involve them as well. And this is what I think will help also to build our community. How we can fix or increase the user experience? Well, regarding those three points, making the structure more clear and easy to understand. By this, we will learn to use the structure. For him, it will, uh, it will be easier to understand the concepts and also to talk about them. When, when we learn him the concepts, he will be able also to talk about them. <coughs> Make the views unified, so the user will expect what, what can happen, and the process will be more easy for him. So with unification, with the buttons all over the same place, with the same looking uh, forms and every, everything else, the user will expect that in other tasks, he will get something similar. And he will be more, it will be more easier for him to use it. And then improve the workflows, so we can fasten user tasks, so user can be effective. And if the process is clarifying him, uh, is cl clear, he will be uh, he will again um, share the message. So what we already did for this, we started to unify views. One very big step is converted by what I was talking uh, yesterday. We have uh, login, the same in Catalo and in Conductor. And we have the same uh, shell components, as header, wrapper, and footer. This is uh, between those two applications, Catello and Alice. We should be unifying uh, existence and, uh, no, we should, we had, we started to unify existence and order of buttons across the application. Where they appear and how they appear, in which order to be, to be consistent. And in the end, uh, we also a little bit unify the themes that we don't have dark theme and dark theme and white theme. There is one theme, the light one. We are slowly improving workflows, but mainly by fixing bugs from QE. When QE reports something, we are trying to do something with that. But I don't think that it's enough. I think we need to do a bigger step because by trying to improve the model or the concept which doesn't work very well and we are trying to do smaller steps to fix it, I don't think that we will reach any satisfying point uh, at reasonable time. So what I think uh, we need to do is to do bigger steps. And the structure keeps the same for longer time. I have been here just for a few months, but the structure is all the same. I don't know if it is the same from the very beginning, but it uh, looks that there are more newer and newer functions, and they are trying to be um, not very naturally attached to what is, exists right now. So, what we can do? I have few suggestions and proposals, and they are just ideas kept on the paper, so please take it in this way, it's nothing uh, what is completely done and decided. We should keep unifying views. Uh, we should keep Developing Converge UI, adding new components. Uh, we can, we should create as much helpers or reusable re, re, re components as possible. 
So if we create a helper for a header, it will appear on each and every view the same. And applying rules over the UI. We should write them down somehow. We should keep them. This is very important. And what came to my mind uh, is that maybe we can try to create something like conduct or developer guide about how the view should look like, <coughs> what rules to keep if you want to create a new view. Because the views, for example, details of uh, deployment or app forms, deployables or tools, everything should be the same, the same looking. So we should define how it should look and writing that down might work a little bit. <coughs> Can I just throw Yeah, of I, course. I, 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 so I also think that what I want to do and I've started to do a bit is at the end of each sprint actually sit on a call and walk through the new UI components and identify those things where stuff's got in that doesn't actually uh, adhere to the, to the rules mm. and then punish the guilty uh, but also fix it. <coughs> yeah, I, I think that's a good idea. We didn't really try that and nobody but a couple of us can. Yeah, it's going to be a couple of us who do it, I think. <laughs> People didn't become, yeah. I don't think that they're, they're the people we need to focus on for that task. I, I don't know. If, if, if for obvious things, you could even you know, then give us sprint demo at the end, and we can talk about that. So I mean, if, when we give demo features at the end of a sprint, if something comes up as part of that that, that is an issue with the UI, we could kind of try to point that out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's 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 absolutely right. But I think we also need to not everybody. Yeah. But we also need to separately look at this specific question. Because not everything that affects the UI is gets demoed in sure. the sprint, so it doesn't have to be a big deal, but it needs to happen regularly. Do we need another cabal for that? Well, I'm kind of forming one, so yeah, we might as well call it a cabal. Yeah. We need a star guy first. Yeah, well, right I know. Well, well, I don't know. If, if we don't say what the rules are, it makes it easier to punish people for not complying. <laughs> <laughs> your options open. Well, in, in go back to the carrot and the stick. And <laughs> you facilitate stick-based management. We don't actually say what. Um, yeah, no, we do. Should okay. We, shouldn't this be also part of uh, the review? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 things shouldn't get in that don't already adhere to this, but we need to go and try and catch it where it's happened. Mm -hmm. And like I say, you punish the guilty, try and encourage people to yeah. you know, yeah. follow the guilty. I actually wanted, wanted to ask about that. So you, you three guys are probably going to be most familiar <laughs> with, the, with the new way of building forms and writing new code just because you're, you're so deeply involved with it, at least from the beginning. So, would it be possible, um, I mean, a star guide and all that would be awesome, but would it be possible if you guys could, at least for, say, a few couple of weeks, just take a look at every every new patch that affects a view and just sort of give it a quick uh, glance and tell us what we're doing wrong? Because I think you will spot the, the mistakes more easily than Yes, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I mean, the hope would be that gradually it becomes less of a learning curve for everybody and, and you know, easier to get it right the first time around. But that's, yeah. that's not going to happen anyway. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, no problem. It's really matching the perfect, so perfect. Thank you. Well, we should improve workflows. I have here <coughs> very brief kept three main things regarding discussions with people in Bruno, especially. And I just want to go a little bit through them. When I want to create an image as a user, and I don't take it in a scope of conduct right now, I, I'm more talking about needs or expectations. When I want to create image, I just want to specify its version, system, what is running there, and packages. And maybe the permissions, uh, who can access the image. That's all, I don't want to do anything else with that. Then I might have, uh, I want to save it, for example, as a component outline, what we have right now in Conductor, or I want to create image directly and build it and push it to all, all providers I can. So this is just creating image. Then I want to prepare the image to launch. Uh, I want to set number, uh, I want to select images, which I want to launch together, as a, as, a con, as a one group. I want to select hardware profiles for each, what they need, what they require. 
I want to set parameters for services. Do they have some? I want to uh, select providers, or let's say we don't do this in conductors, so let's say realms. I want to uh, set permissions who can access this deployable and uh, who can access uh, the app form, the running instance then. This is sort of template which uh, we can save or we can directly launch it. So this is the step where I think might be good to consider if we need to create deployable for each and every launch of image. Because we are going, uh, right now we are heading user through three steps, create image, create deployable, and then you have to, then you have to run it. But what if user doesn't want to save this as template and just want to launch this image one time with these specific parameters? So here is why I suggest that it might be good to save it as template or deployable, or he might launch it exactly and create a form. Once we have an app for um, deployable, uh, there are two ways of how to launch the image. There will be just one launch button, but there are two uh, ways how to uh, manage to launch it. First is quick launch. After pressing the launch button, I will get the overview page, and I press just the launch. Nothing else, no settings. Everything is pre-configured pre in uh, the uh, deployable and the image will start right away. I have no, no changes. I am running just one instance of uh, this deployable. I start straight away, no scheduling. Uh, I run it until I manually stop it, so there is no schedule for stop. And it has some default name, which we set it and which we can uh, rename afterwards. Doesn't matter. This is quick launch. Just. Then uh, there is advanced launch. I will, I will get the overview page, and I don't like anything uh, what is there. So I hit the edit button. <coughs> there, the edit button might be for some groups. It can be grouped. I don't know. There, there, there doesn't have to be edit button for each and every field. With advanced launch, I can set the name, I can set the number of instances, I can set, I can schedule the launch for future launch, I can set time of life if uh, how long should it uh, run or if it should stop at specific time or if it should stop when it reach some price limit. For example, if we have cost estimates. Then we can also change uh, the details of uh, the deployable if I have permission for that uh, straight away. So if I want to change some hardware profile, some realm, or some parameters for services, or permissions for launch instance, I can do it. But I don't have to. Just if I don't have to, uh, or if I don't want to, I'll just launch it. If I want to, I can change it. Then I can have an options to save this as a new template because uh, I don't want to override what uh, currently exists. Uh, I can override what currently exists, but what is the most important is to launch it with this config configuration. So this is just cap free processes, what I think the user can expect, what I was talking with guys in Brno, and what I think that might help us a little bit to improve workflows. Any questions? With this example at the bottom wave, um, you're sort of saying these are the three options. Yeah. You would not be limited to picking just one at a time. I mean, you could, for example, say, okay, let's say this is a new template, then launch. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. For example, we'll press save as template, but you will save it as template, and then we'll press the launch. Mm -hmm. Any other questions regarding this? Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're going to launch, you have the state there, you have the ability to change the hardware profile and the realm, which would affect the cost. Yeah. Are those like pre selections or actual changes that maybe an administrator had previously made during the preparation of the launch? Uh, so, sorry, I didn't uh, follow the last part. Um, I can change the realm and I can change the hardware profile. It will, it will affect the cost and is that something that the end user is doing or something that the system administrator is doing who has the... This the depends a lot on permissions. Okay. If there is a system administrator, normal user will not have permission to change anything. 
But this, this is the same as right now, that part at least, when you have a deployable, you're looking at deployable, and you go to edit the XML. Okay. This is just a better, a better UI for that, no. that kind of thing. So it might be, for example, sysadmin who wants to run for himself something, and he doesn't want to follow the, the way the deployable is <coughs> prepared for end users. Mm -hmm. So he can adjust it a little bit, yeah. and he can run <coughs> But it's any user that has added permission on deployable. Yeah, it's a user who has added permission for this deployable. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Then we can improve the structure or the navigation of the application. As I said, right now, the structure looks following. For example, when I want to find deployment management, I have to go through environments, environments, pools, and go to deployments there. If I want to reach cloud providers, cloud providers, cloud providers, and then I have accounts, for example. There is three or four layer tier right now. And this is just under the admin tab. Yeah. Sorry? This, is, this just is just the admin tab. There is no monitor. I don't want to consider monitor right now. <laughs> <laughs> just under the admin level. Yeah. So what I think might help is at first tier, we have some categories, some logical structuring of uh, the components. On the second tier, we have individual components, but all of them, everything. Everything what I can manage will be on the second tier, and I don't have to go uh, more further on uh, lower layers. And it's enough. Just two level tier, and each and every component is uh, accessible just through this tier. This is how I think might look like. First is dashboard. Dashboard is a little bit, a little bit specific because dashboard should work in a way that informs the user what happened in the application when he signed in and he doesn't want to visit dashboard multiple times when he's using the application. It informs him what happened in the application when he was gone. And it's, a, it's an overview. So the dashboard will not have uh, an item in the main navigation. It will be accessible through the logo link. Because I don't think that dashboard is uh, the item which will be revisited very often. But it's a start page for a user when he logs in. Then we have cloud environments. There is everything what is active right now. Or what is running somewhere, might be stopped, doesn't matter, but is active. We have overview page, overview page, which is partly copying sort of monitor right now. Then we have management of cloud environments, management of resource zones, and management of app forms. Then there is catalog. There is inactive or passive things. And it's sort of content I have ready to launch or I uh, have stored somewhere. There are catalogs. Man management of catalogs, management of deployables, images, and management of hardware profiles, which are related to the images. <coughs> then I have cloud providers. Again, management of all providers, <laughs> accounts, their, their realms or front-end realms, let's say front-end realms. Provider selection might be there as well. And also cost estimates, as we were discussing with uh, yesterday, I think cost estimates uh, match to this section as well because uh, it's, uh, it's code to the provider area. And we have users, which is sort of security system where we can manage users, user groups, and permissions. But this is pretty the same as this right now. Yeah? Where would instance logs be? I know you mentioned Sorry? Uh, instance logs. You mentioned history for dashboard or something like that? Instance logs. Uh, as you will see in a short time in uh, the wireframe, uh, we will have notifications on the top, and it's notifications for the user, and it will lead you to the sort of history of notifications, logs, and so forth. Okay. Okay. Okay? Any questions to the structure? Is it clear? Great. And we should, or I think that we should improve the concept of views to unify managing, uh, to unify all the views. And I have a short demo here. So, 
Okay, this is not going to work because we have smaller resolution. So, at the right top, I will just show you right now, uh, it's copying new header which are going to deliver in, I hope, a short time, where you will be username through which user will get to his profile. What I suggest, there should be a quota related to user, what quota he is consuming right now. This is the notifications that seven, for example, seven failures happened and you didn't see it. And here is sort of menu. There can be collect some menu related to the user, so this is menu. And, okay, I'll get back to the presentation. So, this is, sorry. Why? This. This is where user starts. Uh, this is dashboard. Uh, there will be information with, from portlets as many is working on. Uh, about notifications, what happened, about current number of running instances, about current failures, I don't know what, depends what. It will be related to stuff um, which are summarizing the state of the application right now and summarizing what happened when I was not in the system. Notifications. Then we have uh, those, fours, uh, those four areas or the sections. I will start with catalog, which I have prepared. And uh, what I suggest here is uh, two pane concept. Because for managing, I think it's better concept and it's much easier to follow for <coughs> administrators or for people who need to manage stuff. And it's consistent with what catalog does. It's also consistent with what Catalog does. I was a little bit inspiring what Catalog does right now. Uh, they have, on the left side, they have a little bit different Jason stuff. Jason Rist is doing this on the Hangout. <laughs> <laughs> on the right stuff, there are details. So uh, this is the main basic thing when you click to deployable, uh, when you click to Catalog and deployables, you will get this page. You will have nothing selected on the left. This means you will have overview our statistics of whole deployable stuff. So you will see uh, how many deployables you have, how many, uh, for example, statistics about them. I don't know what exactly should be there. This is proposed for mainly for managers if they want to, if they want to report or monitor what uh, what are current data. He will just click to the section and he will get the statistics and overview what's happening there. Then you can change between three different views. This is for managing stuff, and I think it's the most important because the most we are managing uh, these elements. These then there is table, uh, which will enable you to filter and sort stuff more easily. The content here is not what should be there. It's just for this example that there is table of deployables, and it will uh, each and every has some data related. And uh, and there is there is filtering. You don't see it, uh, so there is filtering. You know. Mm. And we can have baseball cards, which can be uh, for some people better to see it exactly as some sort of object or baseball cards, and with a little bit different information. Again, it depends. When I go back, uh, when I click on deployable right now, I see a detail of the deployable. So, what happens if I am I have permission to edit deployables or delete them? Uh, I have an option when I hover the left menu to select deployables and to delete selected right away. But if I don't, if I don't, I will not have, I will not have the option uh, to select it by default. When, just when I hover it. You know? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, on the map deployable, on the top there will be some heading with basic options to delete it, edit it, or in, in uh, case of deployable to launch it. Uh, I suggest there should be some details and other <coughs> sections, I don't uh, say that these are sections which should be there, but other sections related 
to uh, the to the element. So the actual, actual actions related to one item are yep. on the right top, yep. and the to the list actions with the list are on the bottom. are on the on the, on the left here, okay. or on the bar. Okay, uh, but uh, I I wouldn't probably suggest suggest to uh, display display the tick boxes only on hover because. So you're getting problems with the tablets and, and touch uh, screens. Yeah, okay, good point. Noted. Uh, you can have a search here. Uh, you can choose if you want to search by name, you can want you want to search by any other properties of uh, the deployable. And deployables are uh, in catalogs, which is sort of grouping deployables. Again, first is overview of statistics of all catalogs there. You can have different views. Again, depends what you need. In the detail, in the detail of a catalog, uh, you have deployables. And what is catalog supposed to do is to have things which, are, uh, which you can launch. So it means it groups deployables and it works for you to launch stuff. So when you are a user and you want to launch something, you go to catalogs, you, switch, you select catalog, and you hit deployable to launch. Right? And it's ever. Uh, you can't delete catalog when it contains deployables. You can delete, so the delete button is disabled here. You first need to delete all deployables, then the button will enable. When you want to add or remove deployables, I think there should uh, could work sort of uh, two uh, two screen uh, concept. When on the left are all available deployables, and you can move it to the right to the catalog. And this is pretty much everything. Each and every each and every uh, section which is manageable. This means there is just one exception: overview which will overview all your running uh, app forms. Default yours, but you can display all which you have permission to view. But when you have uh, content which is editable, you will have the two pane, which will be everywhere the same concept, elements on the left, details or statistics on the right, and it's in each and every section here. So I don't have prepared each and every, but it's pretty similar as I uh, showed in the plug. It also can work for permissions, uh, where you can have global permissions uh, which are grouped by the sections uh, cloud, or by the elements, cloud providers, resource zones, etc. And you, this is just very futuristic feature. What I can, uh, what I suggest that there might be some sort of helpful, uh, helpful feature that you set the user from whose eyes you want to see the application, and you will not see the content what the user sees. So this means when I want to see what Homer, be, Homer can see regarding his permission, I write his name, I apply it, and I will get to his view what he can access. And is this just a listing of what he can see, or is this actually running through the pages showing what that user can see? Uh, no, it wouldn't be a list. It would be actually the view. So you will see the application actually. So, so pretty much across all pages. Yeah, it's sort of that you will sort of access his account. It's, it's like it's like SU. So yeah, it's sort of Facebook has right now when you want to see uh, who is seeing your yeah. uh, your uh, not dashboard but your your profile timeline. Profile, profile. timeline. Yeah. You can write the name and you, you see what other people can see. And you can search for specific elements, for example, if you want to see uh, who can access or who can do what with this uh, very precise image. You can write their image, you will get the image and all people who can access it, for example. But this is just very, very brief what came to my mind. I don't know if it works to implement or if it works to talk or not. Just, just an idea. And this is pretty much everything of uh, of the wireframes I prepare. I have a few more, and it's regarding uh, regarding the personas we have here yesterday. The personas should work in a way that if I don't have a permission to view something, to see something, or to edit something, I won't see it. So let's start with 
uh, the corner, which is consumer. He has two main things to do. First is launching stuff. Second is uh, managing running instances. So if he want to launch something, he go to catalog, he select catalog and he hit launch. He doesn't need any other information. Once he launched that, and he, we, he will get the overview page and launch button. He can't say anything else. If he doesn't have permission. This is the biggest extreme. Yeah? Schedule launch? Uh, okay, if he has permission to schedule the launch, in, in, the, those studies, in those overview he can change it. Depends on the permission. But in most extreme way he can't yeah, do anything. Yeah. And once he launches it, he will get the, to the overview page. When he has overview of everything, he can't manage resource zones, he can't manage cloud environments, he can't manage uh, anything else to or edit uh, the deployments or app forms. He can just see them and manage their states. Stop, run. So this is why he has just the overview there. So this is how the scope is for Connor. Then I have. This is how much he is using of the section. So like code environments, he uses just overview. In catalogs, he uses just the catalog from which he can launch. Dennis has using catalogs a little bit more because he's a designer and he is designing applications, images, uh, sorry, applications, deployables and images. So he will get access, full access to edit these sections, to add hardware profiles, create images, create uh, image templates or deployables and uh, to add them to catalogs. So he is using catalog pretty much. Maybe he might have uh, the, the permission to uh, add new catalog and to uh, assign it to certain group of people. He might not, it depends. So, And he can also launch stuff. Uh, sorry, back one. Not here. That's good, right there, man. Yeah. I can't click there for any. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in cloud environments, he can launch stuff for testing mainly, but he can't edit uh, cloud uh, resource zone, cloud environments, or etc. So that's why he's using cloud environments just a little bit. So he will see just the overview, maybe at forms. Depends again on the permissions and the scope of the user. Sir? Yeah? Uh, is there a way how to see only the deployables that are um, that belong to a given catalog? Uh, yeah, if you click to the catalog. Uh, I could see the, the. Or here in search, you can choose catalog, write the name of catalog, and you will get the scope just of the catalog. Okay. Yeah? Similar to. One of the things that I think we need to include in the images tab, tab which always seems to get left out, yeah. is if you click on the images tab, you want a list of what deployables use that image. It's like, it's like a reverse mapping that we don't seem to do it at the moment. Uh, if you click to the de detail of the image, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah so we don't do that it, it, at the moment. Yeah. It's annoying. If, if, we, uh, if we agree that this is a good concept, then I can start to create separate screens, more detailed, and we will decide what should be on each and every detail there. Thank you. The uh, yeah. At, if, I, if you're still rolling, I don't want to interrupt you, but I had a couple of questions. I of course, to the you, end. you can pull. Um, can we, as a next step, unless you've already done it, which would be awesome, uh, draw or or lay out <coughs> some common workflows through this UI? You know, so we get a we get a click here, click here, click here, sort of flow. Um, uh, if I'm a user, for example, Connor, which screens I have to go through to yeah. launch the stuff? I yeah. want to do blah. Yeah. Go boom, 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 yeah, boom. Yeah, definitely, I right. can do that. This is just the concept. What yeah. it yeah. might look, but definitely, yeah. Is it a question can, of, oh. We can turn around and take that to PM and say this is what we think. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Andy, we think we're showing something earlier on today that tool that helps navigate people through the tool. Yeah, I, I have seen that uh, it's sort of pop-ups which will yeah. that which will appear at the first time. Kind of related. So yeah. Yeah. It was just, just, just one more question about kind of the process of run iterating on this because I know that sometimes you know when you're at the point where you're trying to get the look and feel and basic workflows, uh, then you know pointing out little details around what fields are there is obviously the wrong time for that. But at the same time, is the point where you know, we need to make sure that what we're building matches the model that we think we have. 
Yeah. And if there's a difference, then well, do we need to fix the mock-up, or do we need to actually go back and figure out how much development effort we need to change the model to match the new yeah. design? I, I think you're right. We do need to iterate a bit over. But but, but I mean, even the there, it's, I know in the past when we've done this this kind of exercise, it's not always been obvious, you know, at which point in the process, which kind of feedback is needed because. Um, you know, in some cases, too much detail on certain fields so early on isn't helpful, but at the same time, yep. you get a point where you really do need to identify which things are going to be major development efforts and which things are not, and which things just represent you know, an idea that might not be important, but it yep. will be a lot of work to do. Yeah, okay. So, any questions regarding this? Okay, great. Then I have Sam, who is sysadmin and who is managing cloud providers mainly. He has full access there. He is uh, creating new providers, accounts. He is assigning uh, cost strategies, no, not cost strategies, but provider selections or cost estimate. So this is why he is using cloud providers very well. He is also managing uh, cloud environments because he is creating <coughs> cloud environments. He is cre creating resource zones. So this is why he's using cloud environments that much. Maybe he will be creating also catalogs and assigning them to a particular user group. It depends on the permissions again. That he, might he, also he, be one of our lesser, yeah. lesser, less involved users, yeah. Yeah. like the security <coughs> person or the yeah. young. And do images show up in a catalog? Is that what those are there? Uh, images show up in a catalog, okay. yeah. Uh, he might have access to user again and manage users. It, again, it depends on the roles we have. Yeah. Yeah. I have here security admin Sarah, who just manages the users and permissions. So she will adjust the users and manage these. Mm -hmm. And another infra manager, uh, he has access to everything. Maybe he has just uh, the permission to view stuff. So uh, that's why he is using it just as. Half and half. Yep. <coughs> Security admin person, um, is, although they're doing the user stuff, the real world environment, that person will need full access to audit history and logging for all the instances. Because if something goes wrong, that's the person that will go find it who did what. Yeah. So I'm just saying. So, so to the history of everything that's happened. Everything that's happening. Any type of notification. Yeah, yeah. It, again, it will be accessible through the notifications. And there you can have, for example, the full history of everything or something like this. And the infra manager is mainly monitoring stuff, so he will get access to each and every section, maybe just viewing permissions, and from the clicking through just the second tier, he will get information he needs from which se section he needs. And this is pretty much everything I have. So we are mm, actually not, not using any breadcrumbs. No, I don't think they are needed. Um, uh, okay, so oh man, I, that was I, a lot of work. <laughs> if, I, if I go to the notification center, yep. um, where, where I am right now when I'm in this notification center, I, I guess nothing in the, no, none of the tabs will be highlighted. No, none of the tabs will be highlighted. For example, at, uh, when you have uh, this icon, it might be highlighted in some way that you are there. Okay. But I don't think you have to be in any of these groups. And so the same will be when I'll be, for example, um, launching the deployment. When you are launching deployment, you are at the deployment page, at the specific deployment, you are launching it. So this means you are in scope of that detail of deployment. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. When you are creating, for example, when you are creating new, uh, new deployable, right here, you will have highlighted this new deployable. So you always know where you are. You are under deployable section, and you are creating new deployable. So. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, one thing what came to my mind is uh, if we have uh, cloud environments as the high highest level object to manage permissions, for example, what is very, uh, very, very, very nice idea is uh, Catalog has here sort of, sort of uh, select box where he can select the company. My thing, uh, I don't know if it is a really good idea, I'm not sure, 
just presenting it here, that might be selection for cloud environment, and every content here will be under scope of this cloud environment. I was going to say that that, that, that works for big aspects. Cloud yeah. environments is the closest thing we have to top level object that will contain everything in a catalog. Um, but cloud providers, for example, don't belong to those. They, they have connections yeah. to them, but there's a lot, a lot of stuff under, under the cloud providers that will not be connected to them. Yeah, uh, it, should, it should be related just to the content which is under the cloud environment. So it should be some, maybe a little bit different. Yeah, I just mean, yeah, because like cloud providers, it, yeah. you know, the only thing of cloud providers is under cloud environments is those links to them. But, yeah, definitely. But the bulk of the data under cloud providers is a kind of a separate set of top level objects. It's almost like you have the front end top level objects and the back end top level objects. Yeah. I, I don't think, maybe it will not work, I don't know. But it's, it's just an idea what came to my mind that yeah. we, we might try to think about it if it works yeah. or if it not. It certainly would work really well for the environments and catalog to have for, yeah. to do that. I'm just not sure about the other two. So, this is from a demo. Yeah. And so, this is, it. this is everything. I have a, just a short summary. Right now, we don't do a very good job with satisfying a user, a user or a user from user interface. Uh, it's visible that we move forward, but we move slowly, mostly by fixing bugs. More, uh, more fast by unifying the views for the Converge UI right now, but uh, with uh, fixing workflows and the structure, we do very small steps. And we are trying to fix the model with small bugs, and the model doesn't work very well for us right now. Uh, I think that if we do a bigger step, it will take, some, take us some time and energy but we will stop struggling with usability issues. We will have some concept we will, which we will just follow in other implementations, and we will be able to focus on developing and providing new features. Not fixing all the time bugs again and again and again. There will be bugs, but not trying to fix the model again, which is not working. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe if we start by uh, getting the structure first and then adding like those three type of views, just yeah. working with one. Yeah, I, I don't say we have to do it in one step. Mm -hmm. If we just started with the structure, that would make sense, and then we can yeah. add some nice features like filtering and split up. <laughs> definitely. So I don't say we have, have to do it in one step. We definitely should, uh, if we agree this is a good idea, we definitely should to uh, search for a way which is the most effective for us. For example, we will implement the structure first, then we will implement the two-pane navigation, for example, or the layout. Then we can add the filtering to any stuff, searching, uh, I don't know what. But we can go step by step, but we need to start from the scratch, I guess, because with improving what we have right now, with small fixes will not help us. And with improving all of these concept aspects, I think that we can help build our community because user will understand the project, what it is about. It will actually work and he will enjoy to work with it. So I think he will be uh, willing to spread the word and express his feelings, that positive feelings, which is important. And that's all. Thank you. Any sure. questions or discussions? Yeah, question. I have a yeah. question. So the baseball card view yep. versus the table view, filter view, whatever we're calling it. Everything what? is one view, just change of CSS. Okay. That negates. Well, so it's not work to do. Have we heard any feedback from users on whether they find that useful? I almost never switch, except for when I get in the wrong I have mode. never heard about any feedback from users. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I asked. Like, yeah. But, uh, actually, I don't know. Then they had this concept where you know the basic idea was the table, and with the responsive layout, when when you get to the smaller um, view, uh, mm -hmm. this table will automatically get transferred to the cards, so yeah. it's, it's more visible on the small. Screen. That seems cool, but that also seems like it'd be really confusing. Yeah. When you delete something from a table, mm -hmm. and suddenly your interface. Yeah, because you expect to see, oh, everything should slide up and mostly is where it went before. That's that's how you know that you deleted the right thing. And if it switches around and you're like, wait a minute, did I, did I delete the right well, thing or not? Uh, yeah. For example, from my point of view, the first view, uh, the two-pane layout, uh, works very well if you want to manage something. 
the tables works if you need to filter something regarding some uh, some sort of column. And the baseball cards, uh, this is something extra, but I don't know if it will work or if user needs that. But I can imagine that some users need to have more visible things, more touchable things like objects, which looks definitely like object. So this is the first, but I don't think that this is the highest priority. I think this is the lowest priority, the baseball cards. Okay. There are some, usab there are some usability issues, but I think Andy's idea about dynamically uh, rendering a view that makes sense for the number of entities that you have kind of makes sense because the baseball card yeah. view has got a scale problem. Yeah. And I don't think many of us spend a lot of time using Conductor where we've got dozens or hundreds of yeah. app forms. I think it might make sense if you use that going to the page, but once you're on a page, yeah, yeah, it, no, and, and, right, and right. if the numbers change on you, like like Matt said, yeah. it shouldn't switch on you. Yeah, if Gmail did that to me and just re-rendered the whole thing when I deleted email, I'd, I'd get rid of it. I think well, that's really right. Wouldn't you also be baffled if you logged into Gmail tomorrow and instead of a list of emails, you had little panes for each message? When you think like, what the hell? Yeah, but they do that. Us? They do that stuff all the time. Yeah. I'm sort of used to it. Not easily busted. Email interface <laughs> changes every week. Hey, I mean, I really don't want to shoot this down. It's just no, I, no. I personally never use it, and I wonder yeah. if. As I said, I think that baseball cards is the lowest priority. I don't heard about any real uh, usage of that, but I can imagine that it might be for some users useful, but I think that those two first views, which is two pen and table, are re really usable in our... Uh, the only, the only thing is that uh, I think Andy was pointing out that uh, the baseball cards are uh, much nicer for uh, displaying the status of that, yeah. of that element. Exactly. Like, using the background and stuff like that, which yeah. is quite hard to express in the table. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice thing we're using color to represent the state. It's nice if you just uh, want to check if it's running and have a run button on it. Yeah, and you have a little bit of fuel. You don't have a hard yeah, of that. Yes. In that case, it's, it, it looks great and it's yeah. very easy to use. Mm -hmm. For example, and when yeah, you saw the quite easy. Sorry? Sorry. No. When you saw the deployables and the baseball cards, you had the launch button right there, so you saw the object and you can directly launch it. Yes. Then just go one through one and try to search the launch button and the function. I must admit too that the baseball card thing makes good link screenshots. Which actually can encourage users to. Yeah, it's a factor. You know? It will also work on tablets and mobile phones, but yeah. on tables. Yeah. 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 So, what we're going to, what we're going to have to figure out, <coughs> I think we might, we may be able to make some headway on this tomorrow and Friday. I hope. Um, but what we're going to have to figure out is. How we took I think everyone agrees that we need to make significant usability improvements in the UI, and I think this is a great start. Um, we, what we need to figure out is how we get there without disrupting everything. Because yeah. we can't, we just don't have the time or the bodies to go through a complete tear it up and throw it away exercise. No, no, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's going to mean this is harder and it takes longer. Um, but it's the only way we can do it. Well, I can imagine though some of this we could be doing incrementally. Um, yes. For example, the top level navigation, we could we could rework the navigation to match those categories Definitely. first. Yep. Because all the pages still exist. It's actually the next step with the Converge UI which we are up to. Them. And some of the views we're looking at too. If you take if you don't talk about the switchable and all that. Are still very similar to what we're doing now in terms of overall structure, so it's in a little by little. We, we, we'll need to make sure that we're not in too much of an obvious transitional phase when we're stabilizing the next product release. You know? right. it, may, it might look a bit weird when we're halfway to this new design at some point, which is probably fine, unless that's the point at which we are, you know. Yeah. For example, yeah. I want to just present the concept, if it is okay, if you all think that this is a good idea, because I don't, didn't want to get into details. Yeah. And what I think really might work to do it iteratively. First, for example, change the navigation. I think this is the biggest priority. Then it's you also can the change. Easiest thing yeah. to do, fortunately. Then you can change, for example, the look of the detail to unify it over the application without the two pane, just the detail. Because we have a table and we can access the detail. Once we have the detail, we will just add the uh, two pane to the left side. 
testing, etc. So just iteratively add the functions there. Yeah. The other thing I find um, interesting, <laughs> uh, laughing evilly, is that um, the navigation structure that you've sort of landed <coughs> on maps fairly nicely to a more decoupled back end in terms of uh, you, have a, you have a launching thingy and you have a policy and admin thingy and you have an image and image and app form building and management thingy and those you can sort of imagine that if we evolve this UI to the point where it really is actually pluggable and somebody wanted to go stand up nothing but a catalog manager image builder Tim thing they could put this UI in front of it and it would still work all the extraneous stuff just wouldn't turn up yeah I right would be really great um, I think you guys tell me if you think I'm out of my mind, but I think that will be valuable for adoption upstream. I think people will like the idea that I can just grab this one piece and there's a UI that works. I don't want the whole thing. I don't have to grab the whole thing. Um, I don't know why people get exercised about that, but they do. I don't want all this. You know. Polish pre software? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so there, there may be some value there. Um, as we go along. I don't think we should try to drive ourselves crazy making it happen. Uh, <clears throat> but it could turn out to be helpful. This is a good idea. We will see. I think we should focus first to make it into the conductor to work really well. This yeah. is the first, first uh, thing we should care about. And if it works real well and if we are able to scope it well, we can make it available. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'd just like to um, sort of follow up on what you said earlier and channel a bit of Connecticut spirit. Um, I've been here, uh, I've been through four UI redesigns today. Yeah. <laughs> Major yeah, from I'm the ground up I, I, I know. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I haven't even been here for three years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I, I really appreciate what you're doing and I think that you know the goals are same and the UI that we have now really doesn't follow the workflows that we um, that the users would like. And especially for the new users it is a bit daunting. But I do think that we need to be extra careful not to get to the to another major UI transition where you know everyone's work's gonna be disrupted. And you know you've hinted on that, which is great. So it'd be great if we could, for instance, um, commit ourselves to make sure that the app is going to always be usable on master, or at least all the tests are going to be passing, which would you know sort of help ensure that we're not breaking anything for people who are not directly involved with that. And yeah, I definitely yeah. agree. I don't think that uh, the transition should be just jump. Because yeah. it will be also short for users, and uh, even we have just very few of them, it will be really not very nice. So uh, lo slowly learn them and iteratively do the stuff, and I think it might work. What's also interesting is that this is very similar um, to the UI that we had previously. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's familiar, doesn't it? Well, yeah. the, the whole concept that you yeah. have that I agree with, and making things consistent, the yeah. same table looks the same way. Yeah. And the previous UI was a very explicit decision that we don't want it to be consistent. We want this, this to look different because it's a different function, and therefore it should look different. And so, yeah. you know. Personally, I think this will look better. That's just yeah. personal opinion. The other thing I think we need to do as we're going through this is to, to to make some distinctions between you know which of these things that, that are, we're changing are you know, UI improvements and which of these are actual new kind of enhancement proposals for additional functionality, which are also good things to have, but are not just UI refactorings. Yeah, actually, the wireframes you have seen is just UI related. Yeah. There is no change of workflows or anything. It's just yeah. the UI stuff. Yeah. Regarding the workflows of creating images and that, etc., this yeah. is improving the workflows I was talking about. And there, we yeah. should, uh, if we want to implement it, we should uh, exactly. care about that. And on the workflows, again, some of those, even there, are mostly UI moving around, and other ones are yeah. major rework and new stuff, yeah. which will help. So the wor workflows I presented, there is a little bit more effort yeah. to achieve this. Yeah. 
we got a DMC notice for my thing. When was it? <coughs> uh, about a week and a half after I put it up, <coughs> and nice. which got removed. It was just it was there for about an hour, and then we were saying, "What was that?" Take long, huh? That's uh, yeah, was 7:20 p.m. Hello. We got a DMC notice on it. It got pulled. Who sent that? I can't remember who it was. Yeah. Did you send it? Uh, like, like, oh, we should. Don't worry. I didn't get there by the time it was fixed. By the time I was going. <laughs> Um, guys on the uh, on the hangout, any comments, thoughts, questions? <laughs> thumbs up. I'm getting thumbs up from Eric. Good stuff. All right. Um, okay, so thank you one more time. Yeah, thanks, Jordan.